commentator on the Matthew Gospel, a, a talented teacher, preacher, and pastor. And he reminds us that, that, that Jesus came uh, to, to save us from our sin, the sin that we have done. And that is that he forgives our guilt. For the guilt is about my own sin. And when we know that Jesus has come to forgive the guilt of sinners, we find solace and we have a place in that. And when we hear that name and those names of the women, and the one that wasn't even mentioned by name, Bathsheba, but the wife of Uriah the Hittite, it's actually written that way so that the one that who is highlighted as, as, the, as David the king, it's a reminder that David, too, counted on the grace and mercy of God as an adulterer with Bathsheba. And we know about being forgiven for guilt. But this passage reminds us also that God is a God who removes our shame. Shame is the, is the stigma and the, and the hurt of heart and mind that comes from sin that is done to us. Jesus has come to bring restoration and wholeness doesn't matter what the world has said. doesn't matter what someone else has done. The, the announcement and the pronouncement of, of the compassionate king restores us so that you and I, we hear our names and he calls us to be his children. You are, my friend, a son or daughter of the king of kings. And if he says, I love you, and he says, you are restored, and he says, you are new, like the purity of the fallen snow. What did we say earlier about God who keeps his promises? We said this season is a good season because it reminds us that God is what? He's faithful. And he's faithful to forgive, to restore, to draw in. So Jesus comes as the compassionate king that he might even be the savior for those from whom he is begotten. And Matthew is very careful as he records in his gospel. He records episodes of those who are outside brought in. Those who are ostracized, received. In fact, Matthew himself is an example of the very thing. Matthew's occupation? Tax collector. Well, I'm, I imagine his Jewish parents are very proud. Working for the oppressors, the Roman government. Yeah. Matthew knows about the Jesus who receives the outcast and changes the story of one's life. He is the promised king. He is the compassionate king. And also, my friends, Jesus is the rejected king. You see, those who have places of importance and influence in the government as well as in the religious sphere, uh, they saw Jesus as someone who was outside of the norm, somebody they didn't really want to see succeed. Jesus knows what it's like to be on the outside. It's odd, my friends, that the one in authority, 
the one with ultimate authority, uses that position to only set others up for success. You see, we, each one of us has, has developed a, a system, we've developed a filter, we've developed a way uh, that, that as we hear someone speak to us and maybe even talk about ways that, that might be good going forward, we're, we're, we're filtering, what are they saying? I feel uncomfortable, they're being too complimentary, I wonder what they want. And it's hard to really take somebody at their word uh, because there's so much deception, so much Trickery. But Jesus is the one who can be trusted. You see, Jesus is the name above all names. Jesus is the name that when you come to know him, you really start to love him. Amen? And as you come to love him, you really come to trust him. Amen? Because he is faithful. And this faithful one uses his power, his position, his influence, his station. He uses his being to love and honor God, and to serve all by even giving his life. And Matthew would record in his gospel, Jesus of Nazareth, the sign that was above the cross, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. But you see, my friends, the, the thing is, the, the thing is, is that Jesus isn't the kind of king who gives us commands and tells us to go out so that we might do what he can't do for himself. No, he's the one who first does for us. What an amazing king. He lives for us. He fulfills the law for us. He dies for us. He rises for us. He reigns over all for us. And then and only then does he say, follow me. And I know, I know, we start running it through our grid. Is this trustworthy? Can I move forward? Is this manipulation? But Jesus is that trusted one, that faithful one. So as he beckons us in this Advent season, in this new year, he beckons us that he might be bored in our hearts again. He beckons us that, that we might receive him as king and set down our old sinful nature that says, no, I don't want a king. The job's already filled. Because if the job is already filled, then there's no place for Jesus. Then you're stuck in the very place that Jesus comes to set one free. He said to Matthew, follow me. And it changed his life. And he told the tale so that we might hear it, so it might change our lives, so that we might know this Jesus, so we might come to love this Jesus, so we might more and more entrust ourselves to this Jesus. Amen? And amen.
we continue our worship by gathering together our offerings, offering them up to the Lord, that he would use them in service to his kingdom, the proclamation of the gospel so that others would hear about Jesus. I also ask that you take the black folders that are on the uh, inside aisle here and uh, let us know that you're here, pass them down to others, greet others as you do so. Uh, it helps us to continue to be part of the body of Christ together. We also welcome those who are gathering with us online today. And if you want to sign in, let us know you're here. Let us know if you have any prayer requests. It's great to be with you in worship today. Please stand as we sing. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. 
Stir up your power, O Lord, and come to rescue us from the dangers of this dark world. We know that you have come for us by the advent of your Son. May we today and ever walk in his light and learn the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we don't know the day or hour that Jesus is coming again, but we pray that we would always be prepared. Prepare us, Lord, as we hear your word proclaimed through faithful pastors and teachers who will continue to boldly proclaim that word of law and gospel to us. Fill our homes also as places where your word is shared Gather us with others that we may follow Jesus together and constantly be encouraged and built up in faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Son of David, you established your kingdom as a way to call all nations to yourself. So we ask that you would teach us today to walk in the light of your peace that we would be bearers of that kingdom to others. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we ask that you would show your compassion and mercy upon those we know who are sick and visit them during these Advent days to comfort them with your gospel. If it is your will, Lord, we pray that you would grant healing and peace to these. We ask for you to watch over those we know with cancer, Bethany, Eric, Virginia, Ken, and Shireen, and Nola, Greg, and Joanne. We pray for Peggy and her upcoming surgery, that you would bring that success, Lord. Bring recovery and healing to Donnie, Joe, and Mark, Tina, Michael, and Marianne, to Steve, Ron, and Bill. Lord, daily walk with those in hospice care, Anne and Esther, these daughters of yours, who we entrust into your hands. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we also ask that you would walk with us in our grief. We lift up to you the family and friends of Joe, who was scheduled to have surgery and passed away this past week. We pray for his wife, Cheryl, and all of those who mourn his death. Continue to point them to the life that we have in Christ. And Lord, we also grieve with the family of Dorothy Brooks, our sister in Christ here at St. Paul, who now rests with you. We thank you, Lord, for the long life that you gave to her. And we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you who shall come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. This Advent season, uh, we also find opportunities to care for others. We've been doing this for a few weeks. We have one more week with our caring trees. Uh, there's one at each entrance. If you grab a tag today, uh, we need those back by next Sunday so that we can contribute, uh, distribute and uh, bless those around us. If you grabbed something uh, last week or a few weeks ago, um, we ask that you please return it by next Sunday uh, so that 
uh, we can send those out. There are only a few tags left, so uh, we thank God for the way that he's enabled us to be a blessing to others. Uh, there are Advent and Christmas postcards that we've printed up also at both entrances. You can snag one of those, and that gives you information on the upcoming worship schedule so that uh, you know that for uh, Advent season. We have three midweek Advent services coming up for the next three Wednesdays, and then the, the Christmas season is on there as well. And it's also a great opportunity for you to grab one of those, and you can share that with someone else if you want to invite someone to gather uh, around God's Word with you or uh, come with you to Christmas Eve. Um, we follow Jesus better when we follow him together, so it's a great opportunity to use to invite someone with you. We have a congregational meeting coming up this upcoming Tuesday, the 29th. It'll be up at the Fine Arts Room in our school on Earhart Road, and uh, we'll gather around um, Reverend Dr. Rob Casper, who's taken information that we've uh, put together for the pastor profile. He'll give us an update on that, and then the next step of our call process for a senior pastor. And then we'll also get an update on Emmaus Lutheran Church and how God is uh, planting and blessing them. Um, one more note on the poinsettias. Uh, today's the last day to grab those. You can grab a, a sheet on your way out if you want to um, make note to, uh, to donate one of those as we beautify our sanctuary for Christmas. And, uh, and then finally, as I mentioned in the prayers, our sister in Christ, uh, Dorothy Brooks, died on Thanksgiving morning. And, uh, and we will gather with the family tomorrow. We'll have a service here at 11 a.m. So uh, you're invited to join us for the funeral service. And then the family, will, um, you're invited to gather with them in a luncheon downstairs in the fellowship hall after that. Uh, Dorothy um, would you know, kind of tell me some stories of uh, her time here at St. Paul because she was a member here for 80 years. Joined in 1942. Uh, so we, uh, we thank God for the blessing that she was to our congregation, and, uh, and we rejoice that she rests with Christ. We go out today knowing that we, like Dorothy, are part of the kingdom of God, and because he lives, we shall live also. Let's sing. Mm -hmm.